Teen Universe pageant will be hosted in South Africa for the first time later this year in partnership with the Unamandla Isago Endle Foundation, founded by 16-year-old Miss Teen Mundial SA 2023, Unamandla Villagasi. Now, the event, which will take place over a week, will be staged in both Kimberley in the Northern Cape and in Gauteng. For more insights on the event, we're now joined by Maria Gigante, who is the Universal Woman 2024. Yes. Maria, welcome. Thank you, and Dumela. <laughs> Mabuhai oh. from the Philippines. Oh, wow. No, thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure having you here. Congratulations on your crowning thank this year you. in March. Thank you. When we talk about pageants, maybe just to get this out of okay. the way, quite a lot of the time, especially in South Africa, the relevancy of pageants in this day and age is still questioned. Why yeah. do you think it's important, especially for young girls as we're talking Miss Teen Universe, um, for them to participate in pageants? Well, especially in the advent of the younger generation now, I think it's very important. While the advancement of technology widens the disparity between the parents and the kids, it's very important for us to have pageants like Miss Teen Universe in order to have an open and honest dialogue uh, between parents and kids. The wider the gap becomes, the more effort we need to create in terms of creating a more open space for our parents to connect with their children and for the children to connect with their parents. Mm -hmm. Because currently we live very separate lives. We do. We, we most do. certainly do. Yes. And you feel that pageants are able to bridge that gap? Definitely. I think pageants are an icebreaker. And for me, when I was, when I was a kid, um, it provided me with role models to look up to uh, in a landscape that was otherwise not friendly to me as a, as a girl that is of a darker color or is of different interests or whatnot. So it gave me a platform to advocate for my interests and to inspire like-minded young girls such as myself. Yeah. But with Miss Teen Universe, I think that the push for this year is to be able for the girls, not just to promote their advocacies, but really to inspire those conversations with the parents, between the parents and the young girls and encourage openness so that we are, we feel more space. We feel more safe sharing each other's space. Of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you won Miss World Philippines in 2022, and I can believe that that platform was a springboard for you um, in so many other ways and other facets of your life. Now, Definitely. Miss Teen Universe 2024 will be hosted on South African soil for the very first time, long Indeed. overdue. What's your view on South Africa being the host this year? Uh, just as you said, it is long overdue. I have been a huge fan of South African beauty queens because I believe that they are so, so intelligent. Not just beautiful, but whenever they approach the microphone on stage, they deliver their answers which, with such an ease and calmness that I just know that they are ready because they've learned this, not just through books, but by heart. Mm. They speak from the heart when they speak about women empowerment, when they speak about... Um, all kinds of issues like taking up space, like Zozabini says. Of course. Right? These are the role models that we want to have for our teens. But of course, it's better to start them early in pageants like Miss Teen Universe. Yes. Yeah. And, and starting them early, I mean, the, the pageant will take place, like we said, in South Africa. Indeed. How many girls will be coming from across the globe in which parts of the world um, they'll be spending a week here? Just take us through those logistics in terms of what's expected of all these global teen queens okay. and what they'll be doing in terms of activities on African soil. Okay, so the 10 days, uh, the pageant will be happening over 10 days and it will consist of tours all around Africa. So the locations themselves are to be announced in the Miss Teen Universe organization. Of course, we're also welcoming our current reigning Miss Teen Universe, Lynette Arce Garcia, beautiful mm -hmm. young lady, such an aspirational queen to look up to. And um, we will feature 50 candidates this year. We're expecting 50 candidates. We don't know if we'll have more or okay. a little bit less, but that is a benchmark for now. And that, I think that is a great um, starting number to of have course. it for the first time here in South Africa. And you know your country is so, so beautiful. You're so blessed with so many natural resources and amazing, perfect weather. I believe that it's a great <laughs> springboard course. for the girls to draw from their environment and really um, promote their advocacies and be able to show the world what South Africa is all about. You know, the people here are so lovely as well. No, we thank you. Yeah, it's an enriching experience. and. Being from the Philippines, it's a place that's also, you know, known for being hospita hospitable. Yes. 
Yeah. So coming to South Africa, I was so shocked to see that there were so many lovely people, and I waited so long to come here. But this is this place is just beyond. It's definitely in my top five favorite countries, <laughs> and I cannot wait for the girls to come here because I'm sure they will feel the same as well. Mm. So currently, we're just expecting all of the delegates to arrive now, because I believe they're either being pre-selected or being crowned in the different regions. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and then so, they'll make their way to South Africa. And then they'll make their That's way to so South interesting. Africa in November. Now, it's very important for the girls, of course, to experience the cultural diversity of South exactly. Africa. In terms of transformation and inclusion yes. in, in pageants, okay. um, like you say, for darker skinned girls to be able to make it on global stages, yes. we, saw, we saw with Zozibini and how she was able to move the world and how she thinks and how Indeed. she moves. How much of that do you advocate for, especially when the girls are still teenagers? Well, to start, um, our CEO, uh, Brian Guerrero, and our president, Carolina uh, Cortez, Carolina London, sorry, they are big believers in inclusivity. For example, they also, uh, Miss Carolina London was also behind founding Universal Woman. And we only have one requirement, which is the age. It's between 18 to 45, and a, any women between those ages of any background, any, um, any race, and any circumstance can join, and even trans women can join. So she's a huge advocate of in inclusivity, and this is where she's coming from. This, mm -hmm. this is the crown that I won. Right. And we are huge on social projects. And I believe that's something that she's really bringing to the table um, with Miss Teen Universe. Um, I'm really interested to see how they're going to execute it, but she's a huge advocate of girls who can communicate. So that's what we're looking for in candidates and winners. And I hope that the more diversity we see in terms of advocacies um, with the candidates this year, yeah, yeah, the more we have a chance of having a very, very, very interesting pageant. I have no doubt that the, the team behind Miss Teen Universe is all for inclusivity. Of course. Mm. And of course, pageants are about that glitz and glamour, the grand finale where we see everything come together yes. on stage. Are we going to see any collaborations with local businesses in terms of fashion, in terms of artists that will be coming from South Africa and contributing on such a global stage? Of course, of course. Beginning with the activity that I did yesterday, I know Mandela Day is coming up, so I've been putting in my 60 minutes. I <laughs> think it's good. a beautiful practice that should be followed all over the world. And be, with the Una Mandla Foundation, I actually had the chance to visit Rest Haven, which is a home for all ages. And they're currently expanding their facilities to accommodate more elderly people. They currently house around 15 to 20 children. And um, on my Instagram, I'm actually having an active fundraising for them. Um, the Una Mandla Foundation is founded by a young girl, yeah. and I'm so happy that Miss Teen Universe is supporting her in this. Um, it's a beautiful advocacy, truly. And I heard that I was the first beauty queen to visit them. Wow. So this is only the first of many activities that we have planned, and I'm sure that plenty of South African talent will be included in the production. Mm. Lastly, if any young girl is, is watching this and they want to know how to use their voice, especially using pageantry as a springboard for, for any um, career advancement that they would be looking for, what words would you have for them? Oh my, I think it's best to start now. Many of the times we have, many times we have doubts like in what we want to do or we doubt mainly if we can pull it off, right? If we can truly achieve what it is that we imagine. But we don't decide when the perfect timing is, so we just have to keep trying. Myself, for example, I started when I was 18 and I didn't get my crown until I became 30. Sure. Yeah, so I think the best advice is just to be yourself and really to go for it, to have a start because you don't know when you're gonna achieve the goal. But what you do know is that it's in your heart. And as long as it's in your heart, you should keep trying because someone out there is watching. Of course, it's never too late. Maria, thank you so much for joining us. This is truly exciting, not only for the South African girls, but also for those that will be coming from all over the globe and experiencing South Africa and you truly using this opportunity to bolster themselves even forward in whatever it is that they want to do. So thank you for your time and we really look forward to the pageant at the end of the year.